Hi lovely listeners, you're listening to Sarah Cudmore, founder of the homeschool app Collage from Homegrown Learning. I've been asked by some listeners how should they record their child's learning and what aspect should they be recording. So I thought it would be useful to maybe do a short podcast outlining what and why I think it is useful. So naturally, as parents, we want to record the moments when our child starts to do things, you know, from that first smile that they, uh, they, they, they lovingly do and the first time that they sit and when they take their first steps or when they start writing and riding a bike. And these we keep as memories of, um, of those special moments. We either print the photos and put them in special books or we print those, you know, keepsake books that you get on photo box and things like that. Or we just store them within our mobile devices and flick through and reflect on them. And I guess there's really no wrongs or rights about how you do it. It comes down to kind of choice, time, beliefs, your methods of homeschooling. But hopefully this podcast will help you to work out where you are and and what might work for you. Um, If you've registered with the local authority, most likely an elective home education officer will ask you at some point to show you the progress that your child's making, either through a meeting or by um, asking you to send evidence of work or a little report of where your child is. Even if you've not registered, the chances are that you still want to capture the learning for your own benefit or to share with your children as they grow up. Um, I know some listeners have spoken to me about um, feeling the need to share with their partner what they're doing or family, um, particularly where partners or family um, aren't in support of of home educating the child. But I do love the idea of my child being able to look back on the huge adventure that we had at home and just reflect on all the amazing things that, that we've done together. And I guess Um, I should comment that that in reality, at the time of recording this podcast, the 15th of December 2020, whether we like it or not, the government seems set to ensure that everyone registers. And this comes with recent feedback from the government inquiry into home education in the UK. And the committee in that inquiry reported to support parents and children who may be considering or who have already withdrawn their children from school for elective home education, we remain committed to a register system for children not in school. More work is required on the practical aspects of delivery and the government will also be engaging further with the home education sector. I really hope they do. Further details will be set out on this in the government's response. Although this is supposed to be a consultation, they do seem to have made their decision, which they suggest is based mainly around uh, safeguarding young people. And again, I could do another podcast just about that and talk about um, how safe children are actually in school, where there's long term bullying and uh, many other sorts of um, traumatic things that happen to children in school. But I won't. That's not a topic for today. Um, But anyway, so you may also be aware that um, Anne Longfield, the Children's Commissioner for England in October, she said a, um, a register had been agreed and that the DfE were committed to a compulsory register. And also the Local Government Association report on children missing in education already uses terminology such as formal. So we really do watch this space. Um, it could mean just a register um, and we carry on kind of doing what we're doing but it could mean a register and that we have to follow the national curriculum as many other countries do and we need to report to the local um, authority officer once a year or however long they speculate but I specify but either way they are looking at more evidence of what we do Um, and there were some horrendous radio uh, reports where Robert Halfen uh, suggested that there was more rigour for home educating families and even potentially mentioned uh, inspectors and exams and things like that but we won't um, we'll wait and see what they what they come out with and there are lots of of groups campaigning against this so if you want more information or to get involved in that I will attach those in the show notes so 
back to the topic. Um, so regardless of this, really, I guess it's 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 about putting the child first and thinking how lovely it would be for them to have that keepsake of what they've done. Of course, there comes a time where your child may actually be able to record their own learning journey. Um, this could be uh, this could lead to something really useful for them to share with prospective employees and potential further education. And and again, another top topic um, that you might be interested in is actually, you know, the future of the of, of these young people and whether they actually need qualifications or whether actually a learning journey CV style thing is actually what, um, you know, universities and some um, employers will will be looking for in the future. So that's an interesting um, debate, too. But whether or not we believe it's the right thing to do um, in terms of um, the register and recording what children are doing, you know, we, we, we consider that in schools there is a lot of reflection on learning in order to make judgments about where children are. And these do actually really help teachers to create their year, yearly reports and, and, and the basis of discussions that they'll have with parents at parents meeting. But the problem is that in schools that focus is almost purely academic and is judged against a, against a set of criteria that children should reach by certain ages. Um, and in the homeschool world, you know, we have that luxury of ensuring that our children make progress from the individual starting point and recognising that everyone's home learning journey would, would look different and be unique to them. That personalised um, learning and that's something that schools have been trying to um, deliver for years. Um, I asked many homeschoolers how they re currently record their learning. And most of them, or a lot of them, um, use workbooks, worksheets, written files. Um, they have notes which they've stored on their phones um, to show the progress their child's made. And I guess this is all perfectly fine. And you have to just consider um, all the other times that they show learning. So for me, you know, um, it's about capturing what they've learned and then, then then showing that as embedding that their learning and putting it into practice. Um, and in school, that is actually called having a greater depth of learning. And they desperately want children to show that, um, but, but they can't because they don't have um, enough time in the day because they're trying to get through the list of curriculum objectives they have to deliver. But in my opinion, um, this, is, this is the crux of it. So unlike schools, we do have time with our children and we can see those greater depths, those embedding learning um, moments. And they're the key things for me to record. Um, so you can obviously save bits of written work on, on bits of paper or electronic files. But often it's, it's those things that they say um, um, and videos that you can, can capture of them doing the greater depth. Um, I used to call them like wow moments, you know, when you've you've spoken about something and then all of a sudden they make some comment and you just think, oh, my gosh, they got that. They not only got that, but they've they've used that in um, in a in a in in the right sense. And they've been able to take it on another step. Um, so um, other parents I spoke to um, said that they use Facebook and Instagram to record some of the wonderful things that they do with their children. But I guess the purpose of of that is more to share moments and thoughts with with family, friends and the audience that you have, as opposed to reflecting on the progress. Um, and I guess it's it's definitely not something that the local authority would see as evidence of learning. Um, and I guess it's it's not easy to organise those learning into themes or subjects or or whatever to be able to um to do pure reflection so you could have computer files that you upload um, images to and save under file names but that in in my experience that can be time consuming and we all know that us homeschool mamas don't have masses of that um, so it was all these problems really that led me to create collage and after about six months of homeschooling I realized that I had over a hundred um, photos of things that they'd done as well as like bits of paper that I was madly trying to sort of find boxes to, to put them in. Um, and, and then 
started taking photos and videos of everything they did, um, even those sort of paper things so that I could prevent the filing of, of, of the paper um, pictures and whatever it was that they did. But I felt slightly nervous that I couldn't easily go back and find something to compare what my child was like now in comparison to kind of six months ago. And, and that's kind of where the Collage app was born. Um, I created the app um, to enable me to file things securely, chronologically, because for me, I'm really passionate about seeing the progress they made and like put, and tying things together and saying, you know, oh, yeah, it was about when they were um, six or seven that they started doing some emergent writing and actually or um you know they, they started being interested in in reading for themselves and oh my gosh look how quickly they went from being interested in reading to actually reading and all those kind of um reflections that i think are, are really Im important um to us as parents delivering um, or being responsible for for their for their learning and um and really the the whole purpose of the app was also to be able to file things in and I, I use the word subjects. I don't really like subjects, but for me it was the it was the easiest way to organise things. Um and um and they needed to be in subjects to enable um me to be able to look back on the progress. So if they were all lumped together, it's really hard to just section out, say, writing or um dance or whatever it is you want to to look at so and then with the app I recognize that some homeschoolers are using the national curriculum and or dipping into the national curriculum and some are just totally not um, and so the app has two functions to it you can use the national curriculum you can dip into it um, or you can sort of religiously use it or if you're an unschooler, you can just be chronologically storing images and, and notes that you take of um, of your child's learning. And um, it leads me on to kind of the next thing was that, um, and I am going to mention collage a little bit, um, and I, this kind of not a sales pitch, but really as a mechanism for 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 storing and being able to track what your child is doing. Um, Debbie in London messaged me a few weeks ago and she asked me what, what I would class as suitable learning to capture. Um, and this is a really tricky que question, actually, because, or I guess you could say it's really, really simple because it's, it's kind of anything. It's anything you know as their parent, um, you know when they've done something that you consider to be wow. And, and that can look totally different for everyone. And that's... Um, in a way why the national curriculum you know it doesn't encompass everything that they do and it's really important to be mindful of that um, as you're and also consider that learning is everything learning is not just literacy uh, between nine and ten you know actually it's everything they do within a day everything they say um, so the most important thing is to consider that that really you know it can be everything and anything and not to feel sort of vulnerable or insecure about what you're capturing um but just value it as being as being special to um, you and your child um and the other thing that i think is really important is it happens in a whole range of environments so it is not just at the table it's not just at home it's, you know, it's when you're out and about, it's when you're in the car and, and your child says something to you, it's at your friend's house, it's, it's all those other moments that are really important to um, capture as part of the whole learning of your, your child. Um, and that, for me, is why the videos and, and photos are just such a useful way of, of collecting evidence. Um, but we are, sadly, in a system which only truly values the core subjects, you know, writing, reading, math, science. Um, and whilst there's no doubt that these are important skills, um, for me, um, and even with my experience as a, you know, as a, um, a head teacher, there, there are many more important skills that should be learned and valued. Um, for me, I think it's really important that we learn to live sustainably, we learn to care for ourselves, 
we learn to understand the changing world and we learn to ask questions and, and not be afraid to ask questions um, and that we're you know able to be financially independent and and really that whole mental um, well-being and what that means so um, I have looked at those in great detail and and found that I'm able to use the subjects so when I'm talking, when my children are showing examples of like living sustainably, they might fall into science, they might fall into geography. Um, when we're talking about, you know, being financially independent and they're learning about looking after their pocket money or spending things and what that kind of means, then, you know, that falls into maths. Um, so I think there are many other important things and that that's really does come back to you. Um, and one of the most important things about technology today is that we can now capture these moments instantly. And the Collage app um, uses those sort of subjects as, as file as being able as a system for filing. But um, I did create a miscellaneous file because actually um, there are some moments where so uh, when, you, when your child loses their tooth, for example, they're like lovely moments to capture and they don't. They could fall into science depending on sort of like uh, what learning goes on around that, but they could just be a magical moment. So there is that file on there for all those kind of little things that you just want to um, capture too. So um, how do you create the opportunities for learning is what I get often um, asked. And I think this really depends on your style of home educating. So if you're an unschooler, you you know, these these will happen naturally. You will just be um, capturing their learning within any point of the day, observing what they do, capture it and writing potentially notes to go with those photos or videos. Um, but if you're thinking of facilitating your child's learning, um, and I always like to use the word facilitating rather than teaching, because I think... Um, it's all about um, knowing what they're interested in and creating opportunities for them to further explore some of the things that they're interested in. Um, but you need to consider their learning style, their strengths, their weaknesses, their insecurities, the amount of sustained time they can focus for. And if you want to do more formal learning or just aspects of formal learning, I always start with the child and ask them, you know, how do they feel about such and such that for example some children might feel um, depending on experiences they've had they might feel uh, quite nervous about maths or about getting things wrong or so it's important to to bear those kind of things um, in mind remembering that this is one of the beautiful things about homeschooling that there's not that comparison there's not that rule um, it simply depends on where your child is and if you make um, if you make your child spend an hour every day on maths, you know, that could be fine. But question, why are you doing a whole hour? Are they happy? Are you are they are they progressing? Do you need to do that? Um, can they stay on task for that? Or is it just really hard work for you to 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 do that? And I think those are kind of questions that you need to consider in in terms of creating opportunities for learning. Um I personally have found that my children learn best when learning is in a, a real context. So, for example, if we're catching the local bus, uh, what time does it leave? How long will it take? Where will we where will we get off um, and turning things into problems for them to solve? Um, they absolutely love being little detectives. So um, that's that's great. And it's also true of writing, you know, actually writing for a purpose rather than just saying today we're going to sit down and we're doing non-fiction writing and we're doing this actually let's write for a purpose let's let's create a um let's write our birthday card it's it's your best friend's birthday or let's send our views on something to the local paper or let's email um somebody that you're you know an author a politician or somebody that that's of interest to your children and ask them something that they've they they've asked and when it's real, we tend to have a deeper sense of what we've learned. And it goes back to that embedding learning and having the greater depth of learning. Um, back in the day, kids had to write everything down to evidence what they had learned. And that's actually still largely true in schools today. But actually, we can record things that they do in other ways. Um, so you can photograph things, take videos that, or when they're acting things out. And I would always question when you're asking children to write things down, why um 
and they're probably thinking exactly the same thing you know actually it's easier it's quicker they can verbalize things there are times when when potentially we do need to write things down but i would question the sort of um um expectation that they need to sit at a desk and 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 be formally writing so um some things to to consider um in terms of sort of capturing um those or creating those opportunities for learning and then then the sort of final question is like why do you need to reflect on your child's learning um and in short at the moment currently you don't um, and this this could all change depending on what the govern, government finally decide or, or say. Um, but I think we actually, as parents, we, we all reflect on our children's learning. It, you know, most of the time it's just sort of um, a, a brain moment. And we go, oh, my gosh, yeah, I, oh, gosh, only three months ago they were just starting to to um, to speak. And now they're doing their right. They're, they're speaking in full sentences. Um and they can be just those kind of brain acknowledgements. But but some people, um, you know, they formalise that by writing those things down and keeping like a little journal. Um, I've found since starting to use collage that it actually has been really rewarding as a parent to see the progress that they, they're making. It's made me feel really good. And um, I guess it gives purpose to, to what I'm trying to do with them. I told my daughter the other day that she needed anything for her learning just to add it to my blackboard shopping list. Um, and later that day, I saw that she had written dogs, toys, dogs and toys with an, an explanation mark at the end. And I thought to myself, oh, she gets how to use punctuation and she's got a great sense of humour. And obviously I was able to record this with a photo and just load it up under, uh, uh, on collage under writing. Um, but I was able to see at the same time that it was just a year ago that she was only an emergent writer, just attempting to write some letters. And uh, it's the kind of thing that does reassure you as a homeschool parent that your your child, I mean, I'm sure all homeschool children are going to make progress, but it's just nice to feel that they are doing those things because sometimes we have that little bit of doubt in our mind, don't we? Um and reflecting on learning or where you've come from is a powerful tool for children too. Um, it, it enables them to feel empowered, um, I think, and it enables them to feel, you know, proud of, of their their achievements. Um, and you know, it does whatever we whatever we think. As much as we try not to have those niggles at the back of our mind as to whether they'll be okay, whether they'll learn enough. Um, but actually having, you know, all the things that we read that, you know, says that they will learn naturally, etc. Um, until our child's, you know, sort of finish that stage of um, of living with us, I guess, we're never going to know if that is is really, really true. And we kind of always, I feel, always have that little niggle of doubt and we're kind of fighting that doubt because we know, we know it's true. Um, but this does enable us to kind of feel reassured. Um my children absolutely love looking back at what they've done. Um, it's a, and I think it's a really good exercise for them to be able to reflect on how much progress they've made, to talk about the journey and recognise that there have been some hurdles that they've overcome or how many steps it took them to get there. Um, and for me, it's a really lovely keepsake. I'm, I feel quite passionate. I don't know if I'm, I'm not a hoarder or anything, um, but I do love to have um, little bits. I've got bits from my own... Um, upbringing I love like opening my little treasure chest and remembering what I did I've got a few books um you know that uh, uh exercise books from when I was at school and you know I've shared them with the children and you know those old school reports oh my gosh you know how we like to giggle at them um I know I was it was suggested that I would be a nurse because of um my caring nature um but no one ever asked me if I if I could stand the sight of blood I faint at the sight of blood so I wouldn't have been a very good nurse so just just like having those things to kind of giggle and look back is really important I think for me um and probably to a, a large majority of people too um obviously if you're using collage that collage creates those kind of uh, report systems so that you could print them off and and keep them or you can just have them to look back on um and i do think you know actually the things that we're storing and keeping as evidence on collage are so much more beautiful um than the 
the, the sort of old school report. So um, uh, I do feel better about um, that. Um, the best thing that I hear at the moment is when my children ask me to put stuff on collage. Um, so for them, it shows me that they value something that they're doing. And also it allows me to honour the importance that they've given things. So um, whatever you do, I guess what I'm trying to say is make sure it's not onerous. Make sure it's um, something that you can, a system that you can run with. Um, I do think whatever system you decide to go with, it, it, it takes time to embed. And you, you kind of, it's a bit, it's a bit, you have to sort of um, be religious with doing it. So, you know, with collage, for example, it is very easy to use. You can upload it and and file it straight away. But you can, if you're in the middle of an activity or, you know, science experiment with the kids or, you know, they're, they're running off ahead of you and you're just trying to capture something they're doing, you can sit down and do that that evening. But it does, I think, if you get into the habit of doing it, it just becomes um, much easier and sort of something that you just naturally do. But anyway, um, I hope... But that has been helpful to those of you that were interested in sort of considering capturing your child's learning. And um, and uh, thank you for listening. Thank you also for all the great questions that you guys keep giving me. Um, let me know if you have anything else that you would like me to look into. And really, until next time, keep capturing and carry on. Take care.